Happy Easter morning from Loray Baptist Church. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship God. Amen. Thank you. 
He has risen, he has risen indeed. And this morning, I'm here in the basement of Lori Baptist Church. It's kind of a, a spooky place, really. It almost seems like a tomb sometimes. It reminds me of the empty tomb because even though the tomb was empty, it demonstrated the fullness of life that came from it in Jesus Christ. Jesus was crucified. He was, he was beaten. He was tortured. A crown of thorns put on his head and he died. He was placed in the tomb, but on the third day he rose again. Hear these words of Holy Scripture from Mark's Gospel. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be afraid, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh.
Amen. These are some of the most precious words in Scripture to me. My favorite gospel is Mark's gospel. And my favorite passage in Mark's gospel is this passage. It ends with verse 8 originally. Now, some scribe came along later and looked at maybe the other gospels and came up with, with a different ending. In my Bible, it says this, um, the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have Mark 9, 16, 9 through 20. Now, that doesn't bother me at all that we don't have those verses in the original text because those particular verses talk about drinking poison and, and handling snakes, and you know, I'm just not into all that stuff. But Mark intentionally ended with verse 8. Not with resurrection appearance. Surely already stories were shared. That was part of, of the stories about Jesus, his resurrection and his appearances to his disciples. We believe that Mark's gospel was written about 65 to 70 AD, some 30 years after Jesus' resurrection. So surely those stories would be available to him, but he chose instead to end it originally at verse 8. Why? Why did he end there where the women were afraid and ran from the tomb and told no one anything? Well, interesting thing about Mark's gospel is that from the very beginning, the reader, you and I, know exactly who Jesus is. First verse says, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So from the beginning, we know who Jesus is. Now, if we read the story, you can read it in about an hour, hour and a half. But if you read Mark's gospel, it's the shortest of the gospels. You will see as you read that people, when they encountered Jesus, either got it or didn't. And quite interestingly, the ones who got it were the little people, or the weak people, or the diseased people, or the tormented by demon people. The religious folk, they... They didn't seem to get it. They were too concerned about their authority and their power and their ability. Instead, Jesus preached a revolutionary word, a word about love, about forgiveness, about turning the other cheek, about helping your neighbor. And those were scandalous words to those in authority, whether in the state or in the established religion. But these words remind us that the little people got it up to a point. These words were written in a period of time, 65 to 70 AD, when the church was undergoing great persecution. People were being martyred. One man was boiled alive in hot oil because he would not renounce his faith in Jesus. So it was tough following Jesus, much tougher than it is today. Now, I know there are people around the world that are still being martyred, and probably more people martyred today for their faith than back in those days. But martyrdom has always been part of Christianity. And Christians have always been people who were willing to give their lives for their faith because they believed. And in this text, we see women who were the first ones, the very first people to go to the empty tomb and to hear the message. Now we know from the other Gospels, these women who heard this text, especially Mary Magdalene, went back and became the first deliverers of the Gospel, the good news that Jesus was raised from, from the grave. They were the first ones to bring that message. 
to the disciples. They were the first preachers, those women. And yet, in Mark's gospel, he ends it that they were afraid and told no one. He leaves it open-ended. The text has for the reader to make a decision for him or herself what to do with this word. My daughter, Hannah, is working in the Virgin Islands. She's an epidemiologist. And so now she's taking swabs of people who drive through in their cars. She's wearing the gear and the mask and the, the clothing to protect her. But still, she's fearful. She's been working 80 hours a week. And she said she doesn't sleep much because she has anxiety about contracting the disease herself. She is but one of thousands of people on the front lines today who are worried about their safety, about their health. From first responders to police officers uh, to nurses and doctors and orderlies and everyone who's involved in health care they are all fearful of what might come. Our world knows fear. Maybe like never before because of this plague. A plague of biblical proportions. But these women in the text we know at first went away because they were afraid. They ran because they knew that something powerful had happened, something that would change the world forever. But we know that they overcame their fear. That power of the resurrection enabled them to go on and share the gospel, to share the good news of the resurrection. They need not fear anymore. Because they had the living hope in Jesus Christ. I don't know where you're at today. Are you fearful? Maybe not about the plague. Maybe about something else in your life. Well, God can help you overcome that fear. Through Christ, we have the power and the ability to live a life abundantly without fear. That doesn't mean we, we go out and take risk. When there is a virus that can kill us, we could just be carrying the virus ourselves and we could cause someone else to die. That doesn't mean we're foolish. We've got to use our brain. But we have the power in Christ Jesus to live an abundant life, no matter what the circumstances. One day, you and I, we're all going to pass from this world. But if we are in Christ Jesus, if we put our hope and our trust into him, our lives will be forever transformed. When it comes to that day, that hour, that minute, that moment, when we do die, we'll not be alone. Our Lord Jesus will be there to take our hand, to help us step into the new reality where God is, where Jesus is where all the angels are, where all those who have gone before us are. And what a joyous day that will be. One day, our community of faith will gather in this place again. And oh, it's going to be a homecoming. It's going to be an exciting time when we can get together. We may not be able to hug, we may have to do elbows still, but when that day comes, you and I will truly rejoice because he has risen. He has risen indeed. Take this prayer with you, O oh Lord God, for those individuals who are at home this morning. We just pray, Lord, your spirit upon them that they will live in the power of the resurrection, 
that they will not have fear, but they will have hope in what you have done through the cross for their lives and that what you have done in rising from the dead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go in God's grace and peace till we meet again.